Uh, Bobby, how good was your team defensively today? Yeah, I thought we were very good. Listen, it's uh, something we knew we had to be good at, especially in the first 15, 20 minutes. You always know that a team in a second leg is going to come out. Uh, they're going to come out uh, fighting, uh, I think, as they did. But I think our lines uh, held well. Not only that, we knew where we could go on the counterattack, and we showed that in a few moments in the, in the first half. And we just, uh, we just stuck to it. I thought our guys were, were excellent. Listen, they knew what they needed to do today. And uh, from that end, uh, I give them all the credit. Speaking, I guess, adding to the, the, the defensively, you know, Tristan Henry and that kept back-to-back -back clean sheets. At the end, he was getting fired up. He was getting in people's faces. How big was that for your team to kind of boost you over the line? Yeah, listen, it's confidence. We've been playing some fantastic football. Uh, there's no doubt. It's not just uh, this last couple of games, but it's been over this, uh, this second part of the season, uh, the, fall, uh, the fall championship. I think uh, the guys have been excellent. They've made a big commitment to both sides of the field. And I think that shows, you know, our, our last three games uh, of the season are all three against Cavalry, and we've got three clean sheets. Bobby, 180 minutes against Cavalry FC, one of the top scoring, it's not actually the top scoring team in the league, and you guys shut them out. Uh, I mean, I know you've spoken about your defensive prowess, but what else kind of went into the game plan to prevent a team that knows how to score goals, especially here, from finding the back of the net? Yeah, I think we're, we've got a team that knows how to keep uh, the ball out of our own net. Uh, we've got a team that knows how to play on the road. We have a team that knows how to play at this field. Um, we've done it successfully in the past. We've come here, won games. Yeah, we've lost here in the past too, but we've also gotten our tactical plan right. Um, from what we're looking for, if we look back to about four weeks ago when we were here. So there's a lot of confidence in the group. You know, it's, uh, a lot of people asked me before the first leg, hey coach, would you have loved the second goal, the third goal, maybe you missed some opportunities. Uh, the one thing we forget is we came into this game with an advantage and with a clear advantage. And, and that's football. We took that clear advantage. We knew where the spaces uh, were going to be. Yeah, the goal came late to, to seal it, but the goals come in the first minute, goals come in the 92nd minute. That's the beauty of this game. Kyle, when I first met you, you were a young uh, kid coming out of school trying to make it through Toronto FC. Uh, now, many years later, you've won a championship with Forge FC. Uh, does this feel like a full circle moment for you in, in terms of your contributions to Canadian soccer? And maybe can you take me through like some of the highs and lows that led you here? Yeah, I think it's just been a, a progression. Obviously, in a career, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. Uh, for me personally, this is this is massive. I set it uh, outside to, to come back and, and get, uh, get in on the ground floor of a project like this. You obviously you never know how it's going to come out, but since day one I knew the team we had in Hamilton, the, from the top down, the organization, the staff, the, the, the coaching staff, the players, everyone was bought in since day one and, and it made that transition uh, an easy one. It, it, right away it, it solidified the reason to do it. And just being a part of something that's so much bigger than, than myself and to be sitting here at the end of uh, well, it's been a long season. It's, it's fantastic. There's no better feeling than this. You can't take this away from any of the boys. We're the champions of the inaugural season. This was a goal we set out. Never anything that we thought was going to be given to us. We had a lot of hard work. Everyone bought into it week in and week out. It's fantastic. Hi, Bobby. Congratulations on the amazing season that your team has had. Uh, is this the last game that we've seen on Tristan Borges in a Forge FC jersey? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. You know, the world of football is beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful from uh, from many aspects, and uh, you know we're, we're a league that uh, wants to see its its stars uh, rise in this league, and I think we've seen that in Tristan Borges. And of course, uh, until you get to to Real Madrid or Barcelona, there's always a, a way upwards in the sport, and I think that's the beauty of it. I can't say that it's his, it's his last game, but he's definitely done everything in, in his ability to be, a, I think, a star in this league, to be the best player in this league, um, to be a bright spot as a future player. We're talking about a player who's 21 uh, years old, and his, his future is bright. Coach, with the win today, you become the first team Hamilton with a title in, in 20 years at the pro level. Wasn't he the title for the first time in 20 years as a pro professional sports team, be it in soccer or football? Yeah, listen, our, our city is passionate. Our city is passionate about everything that has to do with Hamilton and passionate about their sports teams. We know how much uh, this means to everyone uh, back home, not only just our supporters that come out to Tim Warren's Field every game and the ones who have come out just for a few games, but even for the city and the community just right around our stadium. You know, they're, they're avid uh, football fans. They love the Tiger Cats, but they bought into what we are and, and who Forge FC is. I think this is fantastic. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about it earlier. We had an opportunity for, for two of our organizations, our two brother organizations, to come here in uh, Calgary and bring home a championship. Uh, we've taken care of the first end, and we hope that the Tiger Cats can do that in a month's time. A uh, question for Kyle. The fans at Spruce Meadows today obviously tried to make things as hostile as possible for, for you guys. Um, what was that like to, to play in? in front of those players and uh, did it spur you on or, or did it make things more difficult? 
No, it was good. Uh, I think uh, the support here throughout the season's obviously been fantastic for, for Calgary, and we knew it wasn't going to be easy to come here. But our, our whole mentality was we were going to spoil the party. It kind of spurred us on. We wanted it. We, we knew they were going to be yelling at us. We knew they were going to be in everyone's ear making noise, and, and it is what it is. And you just got to use that energy as a, as a positive, and I think that's what, what we did. We never, we never cracked. We never bent. We never did anything. We just we waited. We absorbed all the pressure, and we were fantastic defensively today. And uh, I think in the back of our minds, we knew the other day our fans are better, so they're going to be cheering louder. Uh, Bobby, um, obviously one of Cavalry's big weapons this year has been uh, set pieces, corners, uh, free kicks, even long throw-ins. Um, how much of your team's preparation accounted for, for planning for, for their set pieces today? Yeah, we, uh, we prepare for it from a mental aspect. It's not something you just sit there and uh, whip uh, 200 uh, corner kicks or free kicks in the box and how we deal with it. But it comes down to just a preparation of uh, where your marks are, who you're marking, just making sure you're energetic on that. And I think when you look back, and we'll look back at uh, obviously this film, we'll see that our guys are always uh, on the spot when it came to their set pieces. They had quite a few free kicks that they were swinging into the box. Um, so our guys were, were energetic. We've won most of those balls. And yeah, you always have to deal with uh, Pasquale's throwing. You know, it's something that, uh, that tries to pin teams uh, deep into the area. But uh, we also know it's uh, just as similar as uh, you know, marking or defending any free kick or corner kick from that aspect. So I think it's a part of a component of the game, but it's not something we, we overly focus on. We focus on certain other parts of, of their game and just knowing where we can go at them. Uh, Bobby, Kyle, first of all, congratulations on the victory. Uh, Ward FC now in the inaugural season have played 39 games and they've scored in all but three of them. Uh, and we've seen how uh, prolific you guys have been attacking and how good you guys have been at uh, defending and keeping clean sheets as well. Uh, what's the next level for this team and this club uh, in terms of pushing it on even further? Uh, what are the areas you're looking to add to in going into next season? Yeah, you're obviously happy where you are now. There's no other place you'd, uh, you'd want to be of, uh, of any seven teams in this league. But, uh, you know, once we get back to the, the drawing board, there's always things that uh, you want to improve on. You want to be a better team. You know, it's, uh, there's certain areas of the field, you know, and we've scored in every game. And uh, I think we can score more goals. Some games maybe we don't get uh, get enough goals. Uh, we took a challenge on ourselves, a little bit of better on ourselves as an organization when uh, Emery Walshman left. And, and we gave the reins to guys like uh, Anthony Novak and Marcel. Uh, Zayac, who, you know, it's many people wouldn't do. You know, we don't have many teams in the league who have put the, their attacking prowess of their team on Canadians. If you look at us here at Forge, all of our attacking players, if you look at the front three and everything coming in behind, is all Canadian. Um, so that's a bet we took on ourselves. Why? Because I believe in it. You know, 15 years ago, I came back to this country and worked in the development side of the game. Why? Because I believe in Canadians. And I wanted to do that same thing um, coming into this team. So that's a bet we took on ourselves, and uh, it's a bet that uh, that paid off. But definitely, you go into next season, and here's what you know. Everyone's going to be uh, better. Every team in this league is going to be better because everyone's learned. You know, we learned after the first two weeks of losing eight points that, hey, we need to be better. Uh, we wanted to be champions, but it's something to want, it's another thing to do. So we needed to get better, and it's the same thing we'll look in the offseason, because we know everyone else will be more up to the challenge next year, and uh, probably won't see you know, two teams, us and Cavalry, um, who, uh, you know, if you look at it over the 30 games of the CPL season, 28 and 2 in the playoffs, the 30 that we've played, you know, we've, we've finished with the best record in the, in the league. I think there'll be some more teams up there next year. Two last questions. So uh, Kyle, in the Cavalry has had some good midfielders. They have probably good four or five, but over these two legs, you yourself, Janssen, Borges, you've kind of shut them down for the most part. What do you think worked to kind of stop them from working as a collective, and how do you think that boosted the rest of your team? Yeah, I think uh, credit to Calvary, they have a very good squad. Uh, those guys in the middle, Julian and Nick, are, are very hardworking guys. They never make it easy on anyone, and it's always going to be a battle anytime you, you step up against them. I think our biggest thing was it was kind of just pinning them back on the outside, though, kind of limiting, uh, limiting those opportunities. And if, if we knew in, in transition, if our block was moving up together and kind of getting closer to those second balls, it, it kind of takes that uh, advantage away from them and kind of kills that intensity that they have, that, that they kind of thrive off. And I think we've we matched that in both games, and that kind of stops, uh, stops their attack a little bit. Guys, I'm looking at two of the most humble, I think, figures in the CPL, but you are champions. By definition, you are now champions. I'm wondering, could you maybe speak to the fact that you are champions and maybe share how you're planning on celebrating being champions? Yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, 
I think the guys know me best in the change room. I'm the guy that walks around uh, constantly, uh, always looking to see what's going on, always looking at the particulars, looking at the particulars in training in the game. Uh, and I can tell you I'm going to enjoy tonight a lot, and tomorrow I'm going to get back to work. Because I know there's a lot of work to do uh, from what I believe can be much better, not just as Forge, as we go into the future of Canadian soccer. Our future is bright. Our national team is doing great. This league has been fantastic in year one. Uh, we've seen the rise of players we didn't know anything about, and I want to make sure that keeps on going. I want to make sure that train keeps on going. And then we've created the culture here, and we wanted this championship. Why? We wanted that on top of everything that we've built this year to make sure going into the second year, everyone knows what the standard is, uh, and that's where uh, things are. But I'm definitely going to have a fun time tonight. How are you, you celebrating? I might enjoy it a little longer than this guy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's tough to put into words what it really means. I mean, it's special. Uh, we have a fantastic group of guys, and I think even across the league, it's people were surprised with the the talent we have in this country. I think it's more of a surprise to the fans and and the people who bought into this league than the players themselves, because we've always known that we have fantastic players. And you've seen now all of a sudden you have the likes of a, a Tristan Borges, who's all of a sudden on everyone's radar, when ten months ago he was no one. And the guy has so much quality, but there's there's multiple guys in this league that have the ability to, to reach that platform, and, and it's fantastic uh, what we've seen in this first year. But to, to be a champion at the end of this, is it's great, and we just want to enjoy it with, uh, with the squad we have and the 23 guys we have. And we can't wait to get back to Hamilton with our incredible fans and, and our organization and celebrate together. And at the same time, I already smell like a party. So <laughs>